Why our spiritual passion also must be transferred to this next generation. You heard my husband last week. We, we, we're not despising them, but sometimes, you know, you see them with their attitude or their, uh, you know, their behavior or their mode of dress or whatever. Listen, God loves them. That was half of us half the time. Maybe we didn't look like them, but, but we had the same attitude, right? So, or my mother would say, the attitude. Your attitude, it stinks up from here to Patterson. I had to, I listen, I had the attitude that I needed to get free from, you know, so that's why I have mercy on those with the attitudes. So, uh, you know, <laughs> remember, don't forget where you came from, right? And so we, it's Psalm 78, 4 says that we will not hide them from their children. Amen. But we will tell them to the generation to come the praiseworthy deeds of the Lord and his might and the wondrous works that he has performed. You see? So our spiritual passion, like I said, has to be transferred, right? So Isaiah 60, 4, uh, 4 through 5 says, Lift up your eyes round about you and see. And see with your spiritual eyes. They all gather themselves together. They come to you. Your son shall come from afar. Hallelujah. And your daughters will be carried and nursed and nourished in your arms. All right, and that word means to uphold, to build a foundation. All right, then you will see and be radiant, and your heart shall thrill and tremble with joy at the glorious deliverance and be enlarged because the abundant wealth of the Dead Sea will be turned to you. Um, unto you shall the nations come with their treasures, you see? So, so we're, we're looking beyond. We're looking in the spirit realm. We're looking, Lord, what does your word say? We call those things which be not as though they are. We don't just say what we're seeing here. It's like, it's not that you're ignoring that, but Lord, you're greater. And you have a greater plan here. And I know what the word says. And you may have been spiritually barren in the past. You may have uh, experienced barrenness in your life, even in your prayer life. And I'm telling you, God is raising up an army of, war of prayer warriors, of those who know how to hear God, decree that thing, and it shall be established. We are all called to be intercessors. Could you not tarry with me for one hour, the Lord says. That's, that's a mandate for everyone, not just, oh, she's an intercessor. No, we're all called to pray. And so, but, but there's a glory cloud. When I was in the Philippines, we went there to, it was a prayer conference that we went to. There was a glory cloud in the building. You saw the glory cloud. I, cloud. I took pictures of it. These people were crying out and praying and worshiping, unlike anything I've ever experienced. They didn't care who you were. They were there to meet with Jesus, to meet with the Godhead and for breakthrough. See, that's where America, that's what I think uh, um, Ezra was alluding to. You know, we, we can get, because of what we're used to, we can just get a little complacent in it. We can't. It's like, Lord, fire me up. In Leviticus, it says that the fire on the altar of our heart has to be burning what? Continuously. Not just every now and again. You just, you know, fan the flame. No, continuously. And that is the way that, that my God, with that zeal of the Lord that's consumed us, that causes that turnaround. And it's, listen, Elisha prayed. And um, Linnell did a wonderful job on Wednesday. Elisha prayed. Right? For how many days he was praying for that rain to come. But he stayed in that posture of prayer. And he had his servant go and keep looking and keep looking. There was no cloud up there. But he said, I see this, the cloud the size of a man's hand up there. And so, but see, that's the thing. We cannot give up because it gets discouraging at times, right? If we get all caught up in our emotions and self-pity tries to kick in. But that's the thing. He's saying, sing, O barren one. You who did not bear, break forth into singing and cry aloud. You who did not travail with child for the spirit spiritual children of the desolate ones will be more than the children of the married wife, says the Lord. So enlarge the place of your tent and let the curtains of your habitation be stretched out. Spare not, lengthen your cords and strengthen your stakes. For you will spread aboard, abroad to the right hand and to the left, and your offspring will possess the nations and make desolate the cities to be inhabited. Hallelujah. And so Elisha, when he prayed over the kid who died, he had to lay on top of it and stretch himself. He had to keep doing it and keep doing it. And God is stretching us in this season of our belief system. He's breaking off the limitations. Read Psalm 78. He says that the Lord was so annoyed and angry with the people because of their unbelief. 
the hardness of their hearts. The disciples hung out with Jesus and they had hardness of heart. Listen, we all have to check our hearts because it's so easy to get there. And, and, and like how many times did Jesus say, and we'll talk about it in a minute, but you have little faith. You, didn't you remember the miracles that took place? So it's easy to just be an onlooker and watch rather than, than be a doer of the word. And so God is saying, we're breaking out of barrenness. We're breaking out of barren mindsets. We're breaking out of limitations. We're breaking out of the yeah, buts. No but. Yeah, but this. Yeah, but no but. God is saying you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. And that's where, I, you know, I said, Lord, there's stuff that I'm not happy with where I'm at. And he said, well, press on. Meditate on the word. He said, get into that place of worship. This isn't anything we don't know. But you shall decree that thing, like I just said, and it shall be established unto us, right? The mantle of God, of, of that Elisha uh, mantle was a symbol of God's breakout anointing. And that's what the Lord is saying. He's saying, come on, ascend, come up higher. I want you to get into that place that you are seeing yourself from a realm of seated on, in, in heavenly places in, in Ephesians 1.3, that we are seated in heavenly places. We're not under no devil's feet. I mean, come on. And it's like sometimes I hear, and, and it's like, you know, we're afraid of the devil. He's afraid of us. And listen, I'm not making light of what he does, but I know he doesn't like the power of the blood. That's why churches don't want to talk about the power of the blood of Jesus Christ or speaking in tongues or worshiping or decreeing the word because it takes the devil out. And that's where we as the ecclesia, the end time church, cannot be a complacent church. The people that are coming in to know Jesus need us desperately. Need the church of hope, of life, of abundant living, of breakthrough. That's what we have. That's what's within us. That's the kingdom of God. It's righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. You might think, well, who is she talking about? No, that's, that's a plan for each and every one of us. Listen, we've all had stinky situations in life, right? We all could be on our way to hell, <laughs> and we all could still be in that place. But we made a choice, and so today it's a choice to come out of that place of complacency. It's either you're all in or you're not. 